So I think we can probably all agree that attempts to attribute the shooting yesterday uh, in Virginia uh, carried out by James Hodgkinson on a group of congressional staffers and politicians, um, any attempt to assign blame for that incident to Bernie Sanders solely because the shooter posted pro-Sanders material on his social media account, those attempts are asinine. Um, and the idea that uh, Bernie should bear responsibility because somebody who had signaled support for him in the past did something violent is, I mean, it's, it's too idiotic to even address head on in a way. But at the same time, I think given that conclusion that Bernie doesn't bear responsibility, there is something of an imperative to sort of reevaluate assumptions about how we interpret instances of political violence because there are a variety of other contexts in which somebody who is unstable or unhinged or who has a violent predisposition does something unacceptable or inappropriate or harmful and then that act is attributed directly to a different kind of political uh, force. Um, so yeah, that happens across the board. Um, and I think what this incident should reflect is that we have to take much more seriously and be much more cautious about extrapolating causal connections between political violence and political rhetoric. Um, and you know, one thing that makes this trend makes this analysis so dicey is that there's a trend in recent years for whenever somebody does something despicable or carries like carries out a mass shooting or engages in some kind of terroristic oriented act, um, a avalanche of amateur image, uh, internet sleuths run to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else and um, and they try to make f grand conclusions based on what the assailant may or may not have liked on Facebook for example what uh, who he follows on Twitter who um, who he's friends with on Facebook and to me this is always sort of a fraught exercise because it's difficult to discern exactly what somebody's true motivations are even if you are sitting with them face to face and have a two hour discussion with them right I mean it can hard to, it can be difficult to, to dig down into first principles even when you have full access to somebody's brain in, in the form of being physically exposed to them um, so the idea that you can make any kind of firm, absolute extrapolations based on what somebody might have liked on Facebook is is uh, you know, very, very problematic, I would say. I hate that word. Um, it's definitely overused, but this latest trend in amateur internet analysis does seem problematic. You know, so that being said, one of the links that James Hodgkinson, the uh, assailant, alleged assailant, confirmed assailant, uh, did share recently was a conspiracy tinged or conspiracy inflected link on March 22nd, which was accompanied by the caption, quote, Trump is a traitor. Um, and the, the link had to do with demanding that the Russia investigation be more forcefully pursued and that Trump be deposed from office because he had treasonously collaborated with a hostile foreign actor. Now, as we all know, this is rhetoric that has become thoroughly, thoroughly mainstream in democratic circles of late. Um, there are huge swaths of the democratic base, of the liberal base, um, who now believe some variation of this rhetoric that Trump is a traitor and that democracy has been upended as a result of this nefarious foreign intrusion. Um, and the, so the idea here is that if you sincerely believe that, 
then you may well calculate that certain extreme acts are warranted to address that situation and rectify it. Um, and if you have a unstable mental predisposition or if you have delusions of grandeur or if you have any other kind of character trait which might lend you, which might lend itself to you viewing, uh, carrying out one of these violent acts as somehow, uh, somehow desirable, then you have to acknowledge that the preponderance and the ubiquity of this rhetoric can have an influence on people. And again, we can't conclude too much from the fact that he shared this one link. He may have shared other links that are um, relevant here, or he may, or maybe his sharing of links is not relevant at all to why he did what he did. Um, but I think, at the very least, what this link share, sharing demonstrates is that you know, huge varieties of people are now immersed and have been immersed in this sort of Russia furor for a year, um, approaching a full year now. And of course, some subset of those people are gonna be, you know, have, have a violent inclination and maybe take action in, in furtherance of that inclination. And I think it's necessary that people acknowledge that that environment exists. It's not difficult for Democrats and liberals to acknowledge, I think rightly, that certain violent climates can be stoked by the right. So for example, when you have conservative media and, and Republican politicians wailing about how Sharia law is going to overtake American institutions and that there's a sinister Muslim infiltration plot underway in the United States and that the former president may himself be a secret Muslim who's trying to destroy the American government from within, it's not typically hard for liberals and Democrats to acknowledge how that sort of rhetoric can be conducive to an unstable person on their own initiative doing something that is violent or that is harmful. Um, and there's a similar dynamic underway now. Obviously, you can't draw a strict parallel between the two. There are always going to be differences that, that should be uh, you know, sussed out. At the same time, when you have this kind of language that the Democrats have been promulgating for so long now becoming so prominent, Trump is a treason, uh, has committed treason. I mean, remember, treason is a capital offense, theoretically. And so if what these Democrats say um, about Trump is accurate, he could theoretically be executed. I mean, so that's the gravity of the rhetoric that they've been employing. Um, and if you believe that the Republican Party has been basically uh, co-opted by the Kremlin, I mean, that's a serious threat, theoretically. So therefore, you might be ob even obliged to take some kind of drastic action to try to remedy that. Um, now, all that said, in the aftermath of these events, there's a tendency to make causal connections between rhetoric and action, or to assert that somebody acted as a direct causal result of political rhetoric that they've absorbed or imbibed. Um, and that, I don't think, is, is correct either. Um, so even though Democrats might be responsible for fostering this kind of paranoid climate, even though, as a result of that climate that they fostered, certain people who are unstable and, and paranoid might do something egregious, that doesn't mean that Democrats are directly culpable for any individual act of violence. Um, and, and it's a, a huge stretch to assert so. Um, causation in these situations is always very tenuous, and it's difficult to make a direct connection between action A and rhetoric B, right? Um, humans are complex individuals. They have, so if you have some political beliefs that maybe have been fostered by media figures or politicians, that doesn't alone constitute a motivation for you necessarily. The motivation arises when certain mental characteristics that you have that are pre-existing interface with that rhetoric and kind of congeal to form your motivation. Um, so it should be really abundantly clear that 
neither Bernie Sanders nor the Democratic Party nor anybody is directly responsible or culpable for this act. The person who is culpable is the person who carried out the act. However, you have to acknowledge that there's a context in which that person operated. And if that context is imbued with paranoia and very extreme interpretations of events, it's silly to deny that that could have an influence on the way that people perceive the world and thereby have an influence on how they act and what actions they carry out. Um, but there's a very strange reticence on the part of the media and on the part of Democrats and liberals in particular to acknowledge this when they would readily acknowledge it in the case of certain right-wing trends. And I think they ought to acknowledge that. And and, Dem and Republicans have a responsibility for fostering a climate. Again, I'm repeating myself here, but the formulation is really necessary to make sure it, it's, it's clear. The Republicans have a responsibility for fostering a climate where people have, in their base, have paranoid delusions about the supposed threat posed by Muslims. And, um, and when a deranged person carries out a violent act against Muslims, it's reasonable to infer that they were influenced in some sense by the wider context that has been, uh, has been ginned up by, by conservatives and Republicans. That said, you can't blame any individual Republican for any individual violent act. That's an unwarranted leap in asserting a causal connection. And the same situation applies here. Um, but you know, there's there's a weird now uh, tendency on, on on the liberal side of the equation to say that this person's political beliefs couldn't have possibly influenced his actions, um, and to say so is is an unwarranted extrapolation. Of course, political beliefs can influence actions. Um, so can religious beliefs. So can, you know, more kind of generic moral beliefs. So can interpersonal disputes. I mean, so the, the idea that you're going to deny that a political belief can be operative in someone's decision to carry out a violent act. I mean, that's, that's foolish and, and self-defeating in its own right. That's not a correct way of interpreting this. And so you can acknowledge that, but, but also acknowledge that the, the, the leap into making a causal claim, meaning that somebody's rhetoric directly caused somebody's violent action, that leap isn't justified. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a medium that can, be, that can be struck here. I know that the, the, the differentiation here is a little hard for some people to, to grasp, but I think it's very necessary to make a, as clear as possible. Um, uh, so basically that's the, uh, that's what the point that I wanted to make. Um, I think that it's important that people take a sober look at, at how something like this can happen and not, not dilute themselves as to the causes or, uh, additionally not make excessively, uh, ex excess leaps as to who was responsible for, uh, the actions. Um, so we'll never know, for example, if, if the Russia hysteria that um, is obviously in the ether had a, an operative influence on uh, the shooter, Hodgkinson. Um, and we'll never know if you know, Bernie Sanders' campaign had an operative influence on, on, on uh, Hodgkinson. Um, but in any event, assigning direct blame to Democrats or Bernie Sanders is, is not, not justified. So that's my view. Um, I kind of I laid that out all this in a medium post that went up earlier today. Um, so I will link to that in the description box. And um, if this uh, if this monologue was a little too uh, arcane, uh, I apologize. I think it's 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 important to get into the nuances of this argument um, and not get it wrapped up in kind of the the easy, lazy, popular conceptions of how something like this can happen. So I will link to the Medium post again in the description box. Please read that and let me know what you think and have a wonderful day.